Jamaica's agricultural sector plays an important role in contributing to food security and is largely dominated by small farmer families. St. Elizabeth, known as the Breadbasket Parish, is a source for vegetables and grown provisions for the island. Small farmers from the Breadbasket are important producers of escallion and other crops. St. Elizabeth contributes 20 to 25 percent of all the local foods consumed in Jamaica. But recently, the beet armyworm has been plaguing many escallion and onion farmers in Jamaica. It has been around for many years, as a matter of fact, dating back to the 1970s on legumes. The first report of beet armyworms in Jamaica on escallion was made in the 1990s. It originated in Southeast Asia. The beet armyworm is a serious pest on over 90 plant hosts including weeds, trees, grasses, and field crops worldwide. The damage resulting from beet armyworm infestation since 2009 is estimated at over 150 million Jamaican dollars, with damage done to over 200 hectares of escallion and onion. One thing we know for sure, the beet armyworm is a pest that is extremely difficult to manage, whether here in Jamaica, or wherever in the world you find it. We're here at the Bodles Research Station of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and we want to find out more about this beet armyworm. So we'll be speaking with Plant Protection Officer Mr. Warrell Dietrich. Let's investigate. So Mr. Diedrich, what exactly is the beet armyworm? Well, the beet armyworm is an agricultural insect pest. It belongs to a specific group of moths where the caterpillars are known as armyworms. The beet armyworm begins life as cylindrical eggs, greenish to white in color, covered with whitey scales with a cotton appearance and contains from 50 to 150 eggs. Tiny armyworms hatch from these eggs within two to three days. The younger armyworms are pale green or yellow in color, while the older armyworms are darker and have a dark lateral stripe. The cocoon pupa is light to dark brown in color and is found in the soil. The adult emerges after approximately six to seven days. Its four wings are mottled gray and brown normally with an irregular banding pattern and a light-colored bean-shaped spot. How does this affect the plant? The beet armyworm feed on the leaves of scallion and onion and skeletonize it. As they grow older, they bore large irregular shape in the leaves and produce a lot of fruit. Apart from onion and its scallion, what other plants do they eat? The beet armor feed on a wide variety of agricultural crops, such as callaloo, broccoli, cabbage, celery, corn, cowpea, lettuce, pepper, Irish potato, sweet potato, tomato, turnip, cotton, peanut, sorghum, soya bean, tobacco, and melon. What causes the beet armyworm outbreak? Let's ask the farmers. Beet armyworm is caused by the bat that lay the eggs on the leaf of the plant. And this is how we have the outbreak. What I notice with the worms is that after they have a long period of drought, when the rain start falling, as soon as the leaves start to spring up, they can notice there's worms in it. Well, the outbreak, if you have neighbors, like farmers around you, and, and them don't scout, it will, it will get you in trouble, because they will left that field 
and come on your field, no matter how you try to pick and spray. If they don't scout, just like you, that's what gonna happen. That's why you, when, when, you, when you tell them, scout and spray, man, pick and spray, you have some people say it does make sense, but it makes sense. What are some of the factors contributing to the outbreak of the beet army worm in Jamaica? Let's ask our RADA representatives. There are multiple factors that cause the outbreak of the beet armyworm on an annual basis. Kelan itself is treated as a primary crop in southern St. Elizabeth and it is grown all year round. Also, the terrain contributes to the continuous outbreak of the beet armyworm and also the cultural practices. St. Elizabeth is known to receive little rainfall per annum and this is also a contributory factor of the persistency of the beet armyworm in the area. The choice of variety of the skeleton that is grown, most farmers choose the evergreen hardy, which is more susceptible to the beet armyworm. Also, guinea grass is grown extensively throughout the area for use as mulch and becomes a favorable host after the rainy season, which is between April, May, and August and September, where extensive flush becomes suitable for the beet armyworm development. Under these conditions, beet armyworm migrates to the skeleton and onion fields, causes devastation as the larvae migrate in large numbers at night. During the day, they continue destruction of the crops and may hide underneath the grass mulch or other debris and attack other crops. So most of the time these are a few of the reasons that causes the outbreak within the area itself. The poor use of insecticides is also a big problem where some farmers misuse and overuse insecticides. For example, some farmers mix the spray too strong or too weak and this can cause a lot of problems. In addition, some of the insecticides that are very effective, farmers are having difficulty to buy these insecticides because the costs of, of these insecticides are high. Proper field sanitation is also another big concern, especially in the trimming era where the skeleton is um, trimmed or cleaned um, for the market. After these leaves, infested leaves are taken off. They are left there on the ground and the beet armworm, because of how it um, survives, then it will continue the cycle and from there the pest can also build up and spread to other skeleton, skeleton fields. Other practices which make the problem worse include Climate change, evident by reduced rainfall and increased day temperatures and longer periods of drought. These favor the development of the beet armyworm and make the problem worse. Such conditions exist to a large extent in the areas such as Pedro Plains and the Flagaman in St. Elizabeth. High cost of insecticides prevents farmers from using recommended and more effective chemicals throughout the crop cycle. The lack of community approach to management of beet army worm. And low market prices for onion and escalion often results in reduced care of fields and favor pest outbreaks. So in summary, the year-round production of escalion. Two, lack of adoption of an integrated pest management program by farmers and market price below production costs all contribute to the presence and buildup of the beet army worm. This is further compounded by the effects of climate change. Let's find out how these farmers are managing this beet armyworm problem. beet armyworm, if you don't get control of them, they will take you down. What I do, I pick, I spray, and 
I set some traps there. In the traps, you might see them some, people will call them flies, but they are mats. They are the ones who lay the eggs on the tip of the skeleton. And in three days, you will have an outbreak. Why other people have, uh, have all these problems? It's like them, them spray them on. And, and through, the, through the chemical, it bring heat, and that's and it, it, it hatch the egg them. My one, me never spray it. Because my other friend come to me and say, he call me Yuji. He say, Yuji, me have a salad sal yard and me spray the salad yard. A little bit of spray leaf, and me go put it on my pan the skeleton. So the next, next morning, when I wake up, I put my hand on my head. Not even one piece we cook. From there, so I learn my, my knowledge and experience after it. After it. So I don't have spray my own. And if they here last year, I could, could tell you, it's pretty. Everybody eat them, my one never eat them. And the help of the trap, very useful to me. If you have irrigation, then the bat is not able to lay the egg and the, and the, um, the skeleton leaf. It's better to control the, 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 the bat itself than to control the, the worm. It's easier. What I do to try and control the worm, I do spraying, hand plucking, if it's enough to reap, I try and take out as much as I can by taking out the ones that are mostly infested with the worms. This thing come up to me to plant thyme in my skeleton. So eventually when I plant the thyme in my skeleton, I get a better result with, with the thyme in the skeleton. It goes and goes and goes and goes, tell me to see no more beet armor worm in my skeleton. While farmers may have their own experiences and approaches to managing this pest, the problem still remains. The current management approach on an individual basis has proven to be ineffective as abandoned and poorly managed fields can become sources of reinfestation for other fields under fairly good management. What exactly is IPM? IPM is Integrated Pest Management. It is the use of various management strategies that are used together in a field to keep pest levels low and below the damage levels. These levels are important in terms of getting economic production for the farmers. Based on the difficulty in sustainable management of the beet armyworm, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and the Food and Agriculture Organization have embarked on a technical cooperation program, TCP, valued at US $213,000. The two-year project has as its main objective, one, to strengthen the monitoring and surveillance program for the beet armyworm and establish and institutionalize a monitoring tool in appropriate agencies. Number two, strengthen on-farm crop pest management practices. Under this component, 20 farmers will be trained as beet armyworm management trainers of trainers, TOT, using the Farmer Field School, FFS, methodology a more participatory approach to traditional training. These TOT farmers would then train 150 farmers in a similar farmer field school setting. The farmer field school methodology is perfect from where I stand. It goes through the process as if it was ABC, taking you from the point of what you expect to what will eventually be your goal. I am completely satisfied. Number three, broaden and strengthen the National Crop Pest Management Program. This will improve and sustain vegetable crop production through economically effective and sustainable management of beet armyworm populations. The project will require cooperation among all stakeholders, farmers, extension officers, community members, to monitor and timely implement the components of an integrated pest management IPM program on an area-wide basis. The specifics of the program are as follows. The first thing to do in an IPM program is to monitor the beet armyworm presence and population levels. Scouting at regular intervals and the use of pheromone traps will guide the management strategy to be employed. Observation of five armyworms in 25 plants warrants immediate action. This action could be a combination of physical, biological, cultural, and chemical intervention. The use of clean, uninfested planting material is highly recommended. 
New fields should not be established in neighboring old and abandoned fields. It is also advised that wild callaloo and cotton, alternate hosts for the pests, should also be removed. For existing crops, remove infested planting material. Good field sanitation is paramount for both new and older fields. Healthy plants are better able to withstand pest pressure. Thus, a good fertilization program and timely irrigation are important. Remove eggs and caterpillars from escalion plants and destroy. This includes removal from outer and inner surfaces of leaves and may require clipping of leaves. This is only practical on small acreages with low beet armyworm population. Biological control. Numerous natural enemies such as wasps, plant bugs, beetles, spiders and birds feed on the beet armyworm larvae and adult. It has been observed in South St. Elizabeth that the paper wasp is abundant during the cooler months and have been observed cutting the escalion leaves and removing larvae. Chemical control. Timing of applications is key to chemical control. Target very young armyworms. Choose environmentally friendly insecticides approved for use on onion and escalion, which are not as harsh on the natural enemies, including products with BTS abamectin. The application of pesticides must be done safely to protect farmer and environment health and to maximize effectiveness. Although chemical control may be part of an IPM program, it should be used after other strategies have been employed. Use chemical control as a last resort. Calendar spraying is not advised and should not be a normal practice. Post-harvest management. All trash and debris should be removed from harvested escalion and onion stations into plastic bags or onto tarpaulins to be sunned or destroyed after the cleaning process is completed. Any armyworms present within the trash may migrate to adjacent fields and pupate in the soil to later emerge as adults and migrate to nearby fields. Management of cleaning station. The role of the Escalian cleaning station should not be ignored as they serve as a constant reservoir for beet armyworms. These stations should be properly managed by destroying plant residues after each cleaning operation. This should be a community effort. Work being validated under the FAO BAW TCP include trenches. Digging trenches is a traditionally effective method used in Africa. This is done when guinea grass is flushing extensively and infestation of beet armyworm is detected on the leaves or on the debris. Trenches are 30 centimeters, that's about one foot deep, with vertical sides. Migrating worms may fall into trenches and are unable to climb out and are also accessible to cattle egrets, the birds we call garlin, so they feed on them. Intercropping with thyme. Thyme can be grown in alternating rows with escalion and onion. Thyme has an active ingredient named thymol, which has repellent.